Yeah, you read that title correctly, so I had my MSI Crate motherboard sitting on the floor, no excuse for that, and I also had the CPU socket exposed with no cover on, I don't recommend doing that either. Again, no excuse. Uh, I just, I got up from my chair, my, my ankle swept right across the socket and bent several pins. Go ahead and show you the state of affairs now. So that is the MSI board, and go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'll just put it right there. So you can see, it just hurts to look at. That whole right corner up there is just destroyed. So I'm gonna try to take uh, an old card, maybe like some ID card or something, and see if I can bend those pins back. Obviously, this board is not gonna work as is. I'm not gonna try to put uh, an X99 chip in here and see if it'll work, because it's just not. They're not gonna make proper contact. Those pins aren't with the, with the chip. So I'm gonna try to bend them back as best I can, make them look like the rest of these pins here. And then I'll put my 10 core Xeon in here, the Broadwell uh, E5 2630v4, I want to say that's the chip. I'm going to put that CPU in here and we're going to see if it works after we attempt to re-bend these pins into their correct orientation. So yeah, let's give it a go. Let's see, I'm trying to see how far I can zoom in here without the camera going out of focus. But uh, yeah, so that section and let's see if we can get a better top-down view of it. All right, so what it looks like is those pins are bent upward. Yep, they're definitely bent upward. That's my ankle went across this way, so it's swept that way, and the pins were kind of oriented like this at first, and then they got pushed up. So we're gonna have to bend those back down. It shouldn't actually be that hard. So I'm going to take a card and I'm just going to go like that, like that, like that, however many times I need to, to get those pins back in line. Like it's very easy to see what pins are not where they should be, but it's not very easy to bend them back exactly where they need to be. So I've actually got this old Motorola SIM card little ejector thing. I'm actually going to use this because this pin is about the same size as each of the pins in the socket. So let's see if this works any better. From certain angles, it's very easy to see which ones are not where they should be. You kind of have to look at this as just like one big piece. Uh, because if you try to look at individual pins, you'll just throw yourself off. Just look at it as one unit and then just kind of get that mental picture in your mind and you'll be able to pick out the pins that shouldn't be where they are. And if you have a decent light, you know, I have a lamp here, uh, and you get the, the angle of that light approaching the socket just right, it'll definitely help with your ability to discern those bad pins. And one thing you definitely, definitely don't want to do is, you know, pull or pluck a pin to the point where it either snaps and breaks off or just gets bent so far into the socket that you can't recover it. Uh, because then, then at that point, you might as well just trash your motherboard. It's just trying to solder a single pin into something like this is going to be <laughs> a nightmare. There's a slightly odd reflection coming from here. I don't know which pin that is, though. Shouldn't be there. Sorry, I know the camera work is just kind of shoddy right now. It, it's very difficult to film something this uh, meticulous, but I do want to show you the process. And I think it's just good knowledge in general. If I run into anything unexpected, I can... Say that I captured it on camera, or at least walk you through it as I suffer here. Okay, so it looks kind of decent from this angle, from where you guys are looking at it right now. So I'm gonna swing the camera over to this side so you can look at it from, from uh, this angle over here. And you'll see what I'm seeing. There's just a, you know, there's still a big chunk of the socket that isn't where it should be. There you go. So yeah, you can see there's still quite a few pins that are uh, out of place. So let's see if I can give you guys that camera angle now. And do bear in mind the orientation of the pins 
that'll definitely help as well. In this case here, just because most of them were brushed backwards, all I have to do is just press them down again. And they typically kind of just set back into their original positions. So it's not as bad as it seems. Okay, almost, almost there. We're almost there. <sighs> okay, so at this point, looks are deceiving. It looks to be pretty good. There's a, you know, a few, few issues kind of up there, but uh, it looks much better than it did. However, I'd be willing to bet my lunch money that the CPU still wouldn't work. Remember these contact points on the chip itself are, are super small. They're not much wider than the pin, uh, than the heads of these pins. So we need to make sure these pins are almost exactly where they were before I uh, yeah, kind of brushed them with my ankle. Okay, so now I have a really thin, it's kind of an old uh, SPE card. This was my, my old Society Petroleum Engineering card. Whatever, that member number doesn't mean anything to me. But I'm going to try to use that now to pull some of the pins that are pushed too far down back up just a tad. I don't know if this is thin enough. It's probably not, but I don't have anything thinner that is um, sturdy enough, that's stiff enough to to pull these pins back. It's getting there. Almost there. If this works, I'm going to call myself a professional CPU socket specialist. You know you're important when you have the words professional and specialist in your title. Another way of verifying where your pins are located, just lower your head to where it's level with the socket, level with the entire motherboard, and you should be able to see very distinct straight lines going all the way through. You can see here it's divided. There's one half there, and then there's the other half here. So uh, these pins on this side are bent one way, and the pins on the back are bent another way. Now, but you can look down each section and verify whether or not the pins are aligned perfectly. And you can still see how some of those up top there are not, which tells me that not good enough yet. Okay, I am calling it. I've been working on this for about 45 minutes now, and yeah, I don't know, it looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Uh, before I test the CPU, do you think it'll work the way it is? Let me see, I'll give you another uh, another view with the light on this side. You can see how it does look a tad bit different. There are very, very tiny changes in positions overall, but I still think, given the slight change uh, in about 10 or 20 of these pins that they'll still make proper contact with the uh, leads on the on the CPU. That's what I'm thinking, but we'll find out right now.
Okay, I have the 5820K in here because the 6800K, which is a Broadwell E processor, uh, might not be compatible with the BIOS that's on this MSI Crate X99 motherboard. Uh, this motherboard was uh, designed and manufactured before Broadwell E was released, so there's a chance that that BIOS might not support Broadwell E natively. Uh, so I have the 5820K in here to be safe. I put the 10 core Z on uh, in my personal rig, chillin'. Yeah, right there. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I don't have on hand just like a regular cheap cooler to stick on there. What I do have though, don't worry, don't cringe too much. That's right, I'm just gonna shove this cooler onto the 5820K. And uh, I mean, it's, it's only temporary. We're gonna just make sure it posts and that's it. That's all I wanna confirm here. So it's nothing permanent. It's gonna be very temporary, but uh, th this will at least keep the CPU from severely overheating within the first few seconds of uh, booting. So I'm gonna pop this cooler off and I'm just gonna stick it on there. I'm not gonna latch it or anything. The thermal paste is relatively sticky and I'll just lay the computer down on its side and uh, should be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna push this firmly on the CPU. Like so. Okay, TV's good to go. I've plugged in the HDMI cable and the power cable, and that's the USB hub. I can't really tell, it's pretty dark in this room, but uh, there's a USB little plug right there, and that connects to a wireless keyboard and mouse so we can control what we're seeing on TV. Although, all we're looking to do here is verify that it posts. So, let's turn it on and see what we, see what we get. I don't think I'd... <laughs> there we go. Now let's try it. Okay. And, and we're just waiting on a post now. here so we're going to run the setup press F1 oh, there we go and CPU is an i7 5820k running it stock okay we only have 12 gigs of RAM which means I didn't properly insert one of those dims well uh, apart from that I mean that's no problem that's a two second fix the CPU is detected that's a great sign that means that uh, the pins were reset close enough to their original positions where the CPU can function normally. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna call that a wrap. If you happen to do something as stupid as I did and step on your socket, or you know, just end up with a motherboard that has a few bent pins in the process before you return it, I suggest, uh, because you're, you're gonna have the box open anyway, by that point, you know, just returning it with an open box is inevitable. Uh, but at that point, I would say, if you think you're up for the task and you want to kind of do what I did a bit earlier in the video, you can attempt to reset those pins yourself and then uh, see if the CPU is detected by the motherboard and you get a post. You won't get a post if the CPU is not seated properly or if the uh, a few of those pins are misaligned. So this is your way of verifying that. And if you can verify that your CPU is detected, that means you've done a great job at fixing your CPU socket. So I'm gonna call it a wrap. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Give it a thumbs down if you do feel the complete opposite or if you hate everything about life. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I promise, folks, this is my last screw up for a while. Hopefully, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock on wood. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.